Hi, Jeff. How are you? <laughs> Very excited to talk with you about the Munsters. Oh, so you. my first question is, what was your relationship like to the Munsters before you got involved in this project? Uh, I was a huge fan as a kid. I mean, I, I used to watch it. I used to watch all the reruns. I used to watch all the reruns on a lot of those old shows. But yeah, Herman, I definitely identified with. And uh, like Dan Roebuck, he has all these childhood stories and memories and my brain doesn't work like that. But then just the other day or just today, I think I started thinking about I was in the Cub Scouts and I had to make this I had to carve a Pinewood Derby car. Oh, I did that, too. I did you the did Pinewood too? Derby yeah. race. Oh, yeah. I, I made a coffin and it was definitely I totally lifted it from the TV show and I had a head coming out of it and everything and the feet were sticking out. And uh, unfortunately, I'm the third child and they, they never took pictures of anything by then. So uh, <laughs> I don't have any any history of it. I just remember. You don't still have it? <laughs> no, I don't have it. I don't have a picture of it. I don't have anything. But it was so slow, I have to say. It, it didn't move too quick, but it was cool. I think but I it got was cool looking. Cool look. Yeah, that was props from the other kids, I guess. <laughs> So then how did you kind of get involved in the project? Did Rob approach you to be um, to be Herman? Kind of how did that work? Well, he's been trying to make this for 20 years. And, and yeah. 12 years ago, he almost got it made. And he had called me for that. And uh, yeah, I was honored and, and very nervous about it. And then it went away. So it, that, he planted the seed. I definitely started watching it more. And then... Three years ago, he started up again. I think it was three years ago. I can't, I don't really remember. And so it kept getting delayed or postponed because of COVID. And so by the time we were ready, I, you know, I was, I was a little anxious and ready to go where I, I got through all that nervous part. And then we had a month of rehearsals to kind of find it and find our voice and while we were there. So it really helped. What was that like kind of establishing the chemistry between both you and Sherry, but also you and Dan as like this hilarious threesome. Well, you know, I've acted with both of them before and Dan yeah. and Halloween too. We really got it. I mean, we even talked about the monsters in the scene. It was, it was very cool. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so that was funny that that came around and we both got, you know, we both got a kick out of working together. And then Sherry, obviously I've, I've done five films with her, but in the last four we've always had some great chemistry and and we have a friendship and i just love working with her she's very open and prepared and and giving and we both the actors he chooses are egoless they they come in and they want to help the scene they want to make it work they want to the other people's performances to work like meg foster different people like that richard brake they want it to be they want to succeed and rob wants us to succeed so he creates this great atmosphere so when it comes to sherry i think all that adds and elevates you know the chemistry between us and keeps the magic going between herman and lily you know we care about each you other. guys are really cute in this movie <laughs> yeah oh good <okay. laughs> but then okay so obviously you're not green and I don't think you're as tall as Herman Munster, but I'm not quite sure. So what was that like getting into costume for him? Because you have a lot going on in his outfits. I have a lot going on. I mean, I'm balancing on those six or seven inch shoes. I was going to say those platform boots are crazy. <laughs> yeah, they're crazy. And in a lot of night shoots, so you never knew what you're going to step on or fall. I only fell a couple of times, but I was always wrapped my knees and ankles because those shoes don't have like they're not made like a, you know athletic shoe and uh and then I had this muscle suit which is like wearing a wetsuit and I was always like 15 degrees hotter so I was just like dripping wet at lunchtime they switched we had two suits that one was dry and one was wet and it was just... <laughs> so it was exhausting I mean but hopefully you don't focus on that and you just buy that this guy's just this big goofy you know childlike man what was um, it like getting all the face stuff done and getting the head kind of prosthetic put on? Yeah, that was four hours to get that done every day and then an hour to get oh. out. And at the end of the an day- An hour to get out of it? Yeah, at the end of the day, I was just like a wet rag doll. And, they, and these women, um, uh, special effects crew, the uh, makeup crew, 
they were fantastic and they would just kind of prop me up and they were just you know wiping the stuff off I'll, I'll have to post a picture to uh once this movie comes out because they were just they were great they were Amazing. so good. that's so cool so you get to really ham it up as Herman Munster and I was curious what that was like for you to get to just be this like funny guy and kind of a little bit of like you said a man child and what was that like to be able to play such a comedic character and be just kind of goofy for the whole movie well so one of the things that that it's different than, than the tv show Herman who we we all love and he's iconic and you know you know he's just the master but he's more established he's married he has a kid he he's an uncle he has a job uh he has world views my guy just came right off the slab he's just like trying to figure out his body his his mind is used to driving a ford fiesta not a gto muscle car you know he's he's full of confidence but trying to figure it out so he's like a big teenager his voice is cracking he's not quite sure uh who he is and obviously once he hooks up with her and they they meet, he even becomes more confident and he thinks he could take on the world. So yeah, I, I just wanted to make sure he you buy that, even though he's this big, you know, bulky type person, he moves like a child. And 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 it's we just described what I was wearing and and I tried to push it as much as I could until I was just like woozy and you know. Yeah, I'm just trying to drink something to revive myself. Like uh, I think I was doing uh, like a Gatorade type thing because I was just dripping wet all day. <laughs> Pedialyte. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then the sets in this movie are absolutely incredible. I mean, they're so yeah. intricate. And so, and you get to be in some really awesome sets between like the slab and also like your your um, green room at the bar. And so what was that like being able to interact with these incredible sets that were like kind we were, of put we you were, in Transylvania? <laughs> we were fortunate enough. Yeah, so it's in Transylvania. So it's, uh, you know, we could build our own world The color, you know, he, he just expanded on the whole idea of it while we were there. But one of the things, the, the movie kept getting delayed, but the costumers and the, the production designers, they were all on the payroll. So they kept building stuff. So in a, in a way, it worked for us. They kept building more stuff and, and tweaking sets. And we, they it almost gave them more time to make these elaborate things. But then they're quick, man. They were like on the fly. They created that, that hotel room. Uh, yeah. that we were in. like it was amazing they had this huge artwork and I think they found that place within a week and the Parisian street was another one like they wow. just I don't know they were just so excited and I think coming out of COVID and this American you know iconic TV show they just really wanted to work hard and do it and and working with Rob Zombie it's just infectious like he he's so passionate and so into his he takes such care. It's contagious. And everybody, when it comes to actors too, you just want to match them when it comes to these projects. So yeah, yeah. it was great. We were just like, I think one of my favorite scenes, there's a couple scenes, but in the, uh, it was otherworldly when we were at the Halloween party and all the people and you're dancing and you're interacting with these people in mass and I'm dancing with Sherry. I'm looking around, there's Cassandra Peterson and then I'm looking back at the mansion, you know, and I'm like, oh, my God, we're really in Transylvania or we're not Transylvania, but we're really in the Munsters world with these crazy lights. And it's just like, God, it, Rob pulled it off, man. He really did. That is so cool. And so you've worked with him before, but was it different at all moving from kind of the horror stuff that he's known for to a more family friendly comedic movie? The work itself, not so much because we all kind of go in it the same way. We we all do our research and we come in there and he he's willing to tweak things if he sees things aren't working. So all that's the same. He's all about performance. You know, he really he he wants you to invest in the characters in all of his movies. It could be the villains or you know, the just the victims. So um it, it wasn't different as far as that goes but it was different that we were there during covid and in another country where english wasn't the first language um he was working with a bunch of people he didn't know so that was a little different um doing comedy for me because 
people say, yeah, well, I don't see you as a comedy guy, but I've done a ton of commercials, like hundreds. And uh, I was a Geico caveman too for t- for a decade. So it's like all that kind of stuff. Oh, that's right. Yeah, all that kind of stuff comes back. So um, it, it, yeah, it, I, I don't know. <laughs> I kind of got off track with him, but yeah, he, I don't know. It was just, it, it, yeah. Anyway, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I was just, what was, is it, was it any different working with Rob on a more comedy focused movie than a horror set or was no, it kind of the same process as far as the process goes no as far as what we were dealing with in our life and being there and COVID and trying to do comedy um like my barometer sometimes when I do comedy I would look over at the cameraman or a sound guy and see if there's a smile but everybody's masked with shields so you just see these eyes and and English isn't their first language. So I would kind of like, is this working or not? Or like, and then you would see Rob in the corner and the behind a monitor kind of chuckling or laughing. And then you're like, okay, good, good. You know, it's just so that was that was a little uh strange. A lot of a lot of crickets. You're not you never saw felt like your your comedy was landing or anything, but yeah, it was good. Though. I think I think it lands after watching it. I do I do oh, think good. it lands. Thank you. <laughs> and so going. This is kind of going back. You said you watched the monsters as a as a kid, but did you watch a lot of horror movies in general as a kid? You know, there was like creature features we used to watch. You know, it would come on once a week, and then I used to watch Sven Gulli. <gasps> Sven Gulli. That's in Chicago, and it's so cool because now I'm friends with the guy. And, oh, that uh, is so cool. Yeah, and I and and one of the things. In Halloween 2, I did one part and I was leaving and Rob said, hey, what are you doing next week? Someone bailed out. And so I played the horror show host uh, in Halloween 2 at this Phantom Jam. And um, I mean, this this goes out the way Rob works. He goes, if he sees something he likes, he puts you in as another role. So I did that. I'm not a comedian, uh, like a stand-up comic, but I had to write a bunch of stuff and he gave me some stuff. and, And it went so crazy well and wrong but I definitely drew from Sven Gulli. And, uh, and it's now it's weird that like, you know, I'm friends with the guy. I'm, I'm going to be on his show, I think, October 1st. He has a big special. And yeah, I, oh, I was that's so in cool. Chicago and, and we have some crazy scenes together. And he's just such a cool dude. Yeah. So yeah, I've always had a fondness for horror and, and makeup and uh all the all the prosthetics and Lon Chaney and I had my own makeup kit as a kid and oh and really and, yeah and the tea. just Dan Roebuck too we found out we both had that same kind of I know Dan Roebuck was telling me how he was a cert he was a he was in the he had like characters he made and like was a clown and it was just very very funny yeah. but um so my last question for you is what is the scariest movie you've ever seen oh man what is the scariest? I, I'm always more scared by the people that are more normal. Yeah. Not not the big creatures. You know, those kind of movies like funny games. I don't know the oh funny. You know what I mean? Like have you seen this? Have you seen the strangers? Yes, I auditioned for the strangers. No way! Really? Were you gonna be the sackhead guy or are you gonna be the Scott Speedman? It was, it was it, that's the one that's someone Liv Tyler, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I never watched it. Whenever I don't get the part, I usually sulk. But um, <laughs> no, with that audition, I thought I did. I thought I did okay. I think I, I probably was the wrong age too. I, I met the guy who did it. He was a very nice guy. But yeah, I had some crazy thing happening in the audition. I was like, yeah, it's like those normal people that you don't expect. Those are the movies that really freak me out. Yeah, for sure. Well. Jeff, thank you so much for talking with me today yeah. about the Munsters. And yeah. I'm so excited and I for hope everyone to see it. The most of the reoccurring comment I get from everyone as I meet them at cons is they used to watch the show with their with their grandparents or their fathers and their mothers. And they're excited to revisit it with them or their kids. So I I hope people just go in open-minded and just to go to have fun and relive that, have some laughs. It's a love letter to the, the Munsters. And it's a good like gateway kind of horror vibe movie for kids. I feel like yeah, it's it totally. is great for that. Totally. All right. Well, great meeting. Great meeting.